professional organizers have a secret for making spaces for their clients look the way that they do, and I'm gonna share that secret with you right now. There are five steps that professional organizers use when organizing any space, and I'm gonna walk you through each and every one, and it starts with a plan. When I walk into a client's home, I'm looking at their space, not their stuff. And I think that's what really makes a professional organizer different than just an average homeowner. We're looking at your space differently and creating a plan is really easy. You can use a scrap piece of paper or graph paper and ask yourself really three questions. What do you want this space used for? What do you want to store in this space? And of course, what's your organizing style? And when you know this information, you can kind of look at it differently. If you're in an office, where are the office supplies going to go? Where's your desk gonna go? You're zoning the space on paper before you even pick up one thing. I always start with a sketch. So I bring some paper with me and I kind of, I don't measure right off the bat, but you're drawing out a general layout for the space. Where do I want the desk to go? Where do I want the extra supplies to go in the closet? What's gonna live, you know, if I'm buying storage on that system, this really helps me zone the space. So before I even look at decluttering or organizing, I definitely have to have a plan for the room. And I think this is such a huge change when it comes to thinking about organization because generally we go to the store and we buy products and then we come home and we try to figure out how to use them. But having an idea of what the end is gonna look like, what the room is being used for, what's gonna be stored in the space, that's really key when it comes to making a plan. And then you can take the plan to like the next level and use graph paper. So measure the walls, measure the furniture, and every square on the graph paper equals one square foot of the space. So you know exactly what it's going to look like before you even start. Here's the truth. My sketch never looks exactly like the end result. Things are, it's not about perfection. Things are gonna change and you're gonna do things a little bit differently. But having this as a guide helps you to not only know what to buy or what to use, but it gives you direction and focus when organizing the space. Step two is declutter. So once I have that rough plan, I grab trash bags and clear bags and cardboard boxes for donations and we jump into decluttering, but I don't declutter the way, or no professional organizers really declutter the way that a homeowner would. The only thing we're doing is sorting between what's gonna stay and what's gonna go. We're not making piles, we're not organizing as we declutter. We're literally just like, do you wanna keep this? Yes, cool. Do you wanna keep this? No, well that's gonna go. And also if something is going to be kept but not kept in the room, we're taking that out as well. So what we're left with after the decluttering session is only the things that are staying in the space that we can then organize. This is so much faster. I know it feels like it's going to be slow because you're sorting to then just have to sort again, but I promise you, only decluttering by like this is staying, this is going, is the secret to having an entire room decluttered in just one day. A quick tip when decluttering is to have a memory bin also in the space. That way if you come across something really important like photos or I don't know, some sort of memory item, you can just quickly put it in the memory bin and you don't get derailed. Having a memory bin also makes letting go of the unimportant things a lot easier because you've given a dedicated home to all the special stuff during the decluttering process. Step three is buying the containers. And there's definitely, like I have had practice doing this, so I'm gonna share with you some of my tips and tricks to make this really easy and not overthink it. And I think the biggest thing that I do, again, is organize for the space not the stuff. So you're taking a look not at all the things and thinking, oh my gosh, I need containers for all this stuff. You're looking at the closet, you're looking at the shelving, and you're thinking, I need containers that fit in here. We're not worried about the stuff right now. We're gonna organize the stuff into the containers, but getting the containers is this step that comes first. And so a quick tip is what I like to do is kind of go with the largest containers that you can that will fit. I think 12 by 12 cubes or 13 by 13 are a good place to start because the average one door closet can fit eight. 
So you know you have eight categories to sort into. Another quick tip is grabbing some paper. You can grab wax paper, old wrapping paper, and lay it out in the space cut it to size, and then take that folded piece of paper with you to the store so you don't have to worry about measuring. You lay that out on the floor, and then you put the baskets or the bins in for a drawer divider on the paper so that you have that perfect fit. This way you're not wasting even a square inch. If you're a detailed organizer and you get big containers, you can still detail organize in the container, but you know how many big categories you have when you buy the containers first. Step four is now organizing into the containers. So what I like to do for clients to make it really look beautiful is I stage all of the empty containers first onto the shelving, in the drawers, into the space, so I can really get a sense of what it's gonna look like. I want it to be pretty. I want it to be aesthetically pleasing and functional. So I put the containers in first, and when I have it kind of the way I like it, now I know how many categories I can have. So if I have eight bins or I have 12 smaller boxes, I can look at the piles on the floor and all over, and I know that I have to sort these into either eight categories or 12 categories, depending on how many containers I have. This takes a little bit of practice, and I use post-it notes so that nothing is really 100%, and I might shift things around based on how much of each category that I have, but then I organize right into the container. So it's fast, it's easy, and if I come across one container that's kind of half full and there's another one half full, how can I combine these two categories to make one? I just change the label. So if I have a lot of makeup and eyeshadows in one basket and I have a lot of face creams and wrinkle serums in another, I can have one category just for face and combine them both together into one container. I'm just gonna beat a dead horse for like one second here. Again, we are not going to the store and just randomly buying plastic containers. We're not like, I have all this stuff to organize. Oh, Walmart has bins on sale and coming home without knowing where they're gonna go and how they're gonna fit. We measure the space first or we use the paper for the space first and we try to get the largest containers we can for that space, then come home and organize into those containers. What do you do if you have too much stuff and it doesn't fit into the containers? Um, that's when we declutter or we shift or we move things around to really make it fit. But having this as a jumping off point is key to organizing like a professional. Step five is adding labels. So up until now, you're gonna have post-its all over as you're kind of coming up with the categories. But once everything's finalized, now you wanna make a really beautiful permanent label. A lot of people don't like labels, but I'm gonna convince you that it's amazing because not only is it easier to find things now that you've created a new home, but labels are really magic because it's subconsciously telling you how and where to put things away, which means your whole family, including yourself, you're way more likely to actually put things in the proper spot. So you're not making a mess. Things are staying tidy because you have a label. And here's the thing about labels, size matters. The bigger, the better. You wanna be able to see it from across the room. So it's signaling to your brain subconsciously. You can use a Cricut like I do, or you can use a beautiful clip I love these clips because they just like go on any basket or any bin and you can handwrite or print something off on the computer or go to Amazon and get chalkboard labels. Just make sure you're using a chalk pen and not a piece of chalk when labeling. But this is nice because you can wipe them off and relabel. There's so many great options of pre-made labels too, either on Amazon or at the container store that you just peel off and stick right on your container or you can print them off on the computer. I have a ton of label templates that are all customizable on my website. Pick one that you like the looks of, type in your categories, print it off, cut it out, and stick it on your container. Don't overthink this, but please know that not only does labeling make it look like a professional organizer labeled it, but it works. It, it keeps your space organized and tidy long-term. 
if you've organized in the past, but you haven't had that look that you were craving, like it doesn't look like Pinterest or Instagram, I promise you it's these five steps that make it happen. And you're still having a really functional space. I've been doing this for 15 very long years. And so I've really honed this and found the simplest, easiest ways to get the results. A pretty, a practical, and a functional space really fast. And if you follow these five steps, you can transform your space in the exact same way. I know it takes some practice, but it is worth it. And 2024 is going to be the year that you have a beautifully organized home because you deserve it. I have so many organizing transformations that you can watch to see exactly how I do this, to learn a little bit more. And I think the thing I wanna really tell you about all of these beautiful transformations is these are max two days. One day to declutter and one day to organize. You can take an extremely messy space and transform it into something out of a magazine in literally one weekend. I don't want you to think that you have to be a professional organizer to make this happen. I'm going to put a link. You're gonna see all the playlists of a ton of different makeovers to get inspired. You've probably seen some of them if you subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? This is the year to get organized, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you watch some of those incredible makeovers, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So, story time with Cass. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a rambly story and I'm gonna tell you why and you're gonna understand why I'm so rambly in just a second. Right before the holidays, I had some heart issues. Turns out, wasn't that big of a deal. I thought I was dying though, um, but I have a hole in my heart that I've been born with and when my blood pressure gets really high, I start having some issues. I feel faint, I have some arrhythmia where my heart rate kind of goes a little crazy. Nothing serious, don't need surgery or anything, but I was advised to maybe not take my ADHD medication at the time because it's a stimulant. So I have been unmedicated now for the past couple of weeks. And let me tell you, the old crazy weird cast is coming back. I'm having trouble focusing. I'm also doing this thing where I'm like dopamine seeking. So I'm bored. I'm bored, you guys. Usually when I was taking my meds, I, I was still crazy, but I was like controlled crazy. Now I'm like, I need new things. So I applied to be a firefighter last week. I filled out all the applications. I did my resume. I applied to be a firefighter with my local fire hall. And then I was like, maybe that one is going to have too many applicants. So I applied for another fire hall. Do I want to be a firefighter? No. But I also... I've been volunteering for St. John Ambulance and I'm not getting enough casualties, friends. So I'm like, I gotta step it up a notch. Do I have no time to be a firefighter, but I've applied. And then, and then, and then my husband said, you're too old and out of shape to be a firefighter. You couldn't carry me out of a burning building. So then I tried to pick him up on my shoulder. He is not wrong. I cannot carry him out of a burning building. And also, Every time I have a warm bath, I almost die because my blood pressure, a warm bath almost kills me. Could I run into a burning building? I couldn't even run to the mailbox. But being told that I can't and also being told that I'm probably too old to apply in the first place, it has lit a fire in me, friends. I've started doing yoga. I've started eating more protein. I've been trying to figure out a way to get myself to work out my entire life just to become a firefighter might be the motivation that I need. As soon as I get accepted to this job, I will probably quit, but that's not the point. I'll see you in firefighter school, Joe. I don't know what else to say. I don't really want to be a firefighter, but now I can't not be a firefighter. This, friends, this is unmedicated ADHD. Like, that's what this is unmedicated ADHD. You're just like, I want to do all the things, especially if someone tells me I can't and I have no time for any of these things. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.